Hey, what's up, guys? Today, I'll show you a horror thriller film, Outbreak. Spoiler ahead, watch out and take care. The movie begins with a quotation, stating that the virus is the single biggest threat to man's continued dominance on planet Earth. Then, the scene moves to a military base in the middle of an African jungle during the mercenary mutinies in the year 1967. It turns out, the soldiers in the military base are suffering from a virus called the Motapa virus. The virus causes a deadly fever in infected humans. The American military officials, Ford and Donald, visit the base to check the situation. They take a sample from an infected soldier before proceeding to leave. To prevent the further spread of the virus and to keep it a secret, they order the bombing of the military base. The bombing plane soon arrives and it eradicates the soldiers in the military base. 28 years later, Ford and Donald were promoted to military general who works in bioweapons and extremely infectious viruses. Ford orders a military virologist, Sam, to investigate a virus outbreak in Africa. As Sam is about to travel there, he brings his dogs to his ex-wife, Robbie, who is a CDC scientist. After that, Sam goes to the military airports, where he meets his military virologist colleagues. However, the rookie colleague has no experience in virus outbreak, so Sam reminds him to remain calm and don't panic if he witnesses the grim effects of the virus. The three eventually land in an isolated village in an African forest. There, they witness the remnants of the virus outbreak as there are burned corpses of the infected villagers. They enter a hut and find dying infected villagers. The infected villagers appear to be suffering from the flu and their eyes are distorted. The rookie cannot take the grim situation and ends up vomiting in his hazmat suit. As he can no longer breathe, he removes his hazmat suit out of panic. Sam tries to prevent him and calm him down, but he still removes the hazmat suit, possibly exposing himself to the virus. So Sam tells his assistant to isolate him immediately. The local doctor enters the hut and informs them that the virus is not airborne. He also informs them that the virus is 100% deadly and infected people will die within two days. He believes that the virus can no longer spread from the village since the next village is too far away. It seems that the village will soon be extinct since only the local doctor and the witch doctor are uninfected. Later, a white-head monkey near the village is caught by a hunter. The monkey is eventually kept by a cargo worker. After gathering information, Sam and his team head back to America. Along the way, they report to Ford that the virus is highly fatal. The rookie is crying on the plane and apologizes to Sam for being scared. As they arrive back in America, Sam suggests to Ford that they need to issue an alert for the virus. But Ford dismisses his suggestion, believing that the virus will no longer spread because of its high mortality rate. The next day, Sam and his team arrive at the virology headquarters. There, they examine the virus sample taken from the African village. Later, they read the result of the examination. They are alarmed to learn that the virus spreads so quickly and can kill humans quickly. Ford also examines the sample, only to find out that the virus is similar to the Motaba virus of 1967. He informs Donald about it, and Donald tells him to keep it a secret. As it appears, they are keeping the Motaba virus a secret, since they are planning to use it as a bioweapon. To prevent Sam from further knowing the Motaba virus, Donald advises him to remove Sam from the Motaba virus case. The next day, Ford assigns Sam to investigate another virus in Mexico. Knowing that the Motaba virus poses a danger, Sam calls his ex-wife Robbie, asking her to request a virus alert from CDC. Meanwhile, the white cat monkey is smuggled to America. The worker from the animal testing lab steals the monkey and puts it in his car. There, the monkey spits saliva on his face. Hoping to sell it, he brings the monkey to a pet store owner in a small town called Cedar Creek. But the monkey bites the pet store owner. As the pet store owner rejects the monkey, the worker sets the monkey free in the forest. That night, the worker rides an airplane heading to Boston. While on the airplane, the worker feels extremely sick. As it appears, the monkey infected him and the virus symptoms are showing out. He arrives at the airport where his girlfriend kisses him with her smelly tongue. There he collapses and the rescuers bring him to the hospital. Meanwhile, the store owner is also in the hospital after experiencing the virus symptoms. The hospital takes a blood sample from him, but the hospital staff accidentally breaks the blood sample, causing him to be infected. The virus reports eventually arrive at Robbie, who is currently working at CDC. She travels to Boston and visits the worker who is isolated. Unfortunately, his girlfriend also gets infected and is isolated from him. She tries to ask a question to the worker to figure out where the virus came from, but the worker is disoriented and can no longer answer her questions. The infected worker eventually dies. Robbie and the hospital doctor perform an autopsy on the worker's body, only to find out that the worker's organs are liquefied. 
The virus mutates into an airborne virus, which causes it to spread further in the town of Cedar Creek. An infected person visits the theater, and he keeps coughing as he experiences the virus symptoms. Because of this, he spreads the virus to the theater goers. The town is eventually flooded by virus patients, and the local doctor cannot figure out their illness. At CDC headquarters, Robbie and her team call every passenger from the Boston airplane. Fortunately, there is no infected person from the airplane. As they celebrate, they receive a call from the town doctor, reporting the number of virus infection cases. Sam from the Military Virology Center receives the news, and he tries to convince Ford to help in containing the virus. But Ford says that the CDC should handle it, and he orders Sam to head to Mexico. Sam acts against Ford's order and heads to the town instead of going to Mexico. The military sends military forces to the town to impose a lockdown. They send soldiers, tanks, and helicopters to the area. Ford takes out the secret Motaba virus antidote, hoping they can utilize it to prevent the spread of the virus. Sam arrives in the town of Cedar Creek, working with Robbie and his colleagues to contain the spread of the virus. A doctor reports that a man has been infected without any contact with virus carriers. Sam figures out that the virus is airborne. The rookie examines the sample, and they figure out that the virus has mutated into a new strain, which makes it airborne. The assistant finds out that the host of the virus is carrying both the old strain and the new strain. Apparently, they need to find the host since it carries an antibody for both of the virus strains. Sam suggests they might find the host from the animal store. Robbie heads there, and they only find another sick monkey. She says it cannot be the host since it got sick. Robbie brings back the sick monkey to the hospital, where it got tested. The results indicate that it's infected with the original strain. Sam says the host might be in the animal testing center, but the CDC reports that all of the animals and employees in the animal testing center are negative. Meanwhile, some residents of the town try to sneak out of the area, but the military uses all of its force to prevent them from leaving. More military forces are being deployed, and the area looks like a war zone. Sam observes that the secret Motaba virus antidote is being administered to the patients. He confronts Ford about where he got it, since there is no written information about it. But Ford dismisses his question. Sam gets a sample of the secret antidote and asks the rookie to administer it to the monkey infected by the original strain. The virus keeps spreading in the town, and the military picks up the infected people from their homes. A mother has been infected and taken away by the military to be isolated. That night, the assistant feels extremely sleepy as he continues to work on examining the virus. Because of this, he accidentally tears his hazmat suit, causing him to be exposed to the virus. Meanwhile, government officials are meeting for a possible solution to contain the virus. Donald reports to them that the virus will spread the whole country within 48 hours if it is not contained. The officials then order to bomb off the town to contain the virus. Back at Cedar Creek, the military seals the bodies of the people who died from the virus and proceeds to burn them. Donald meets Ford, informing him about the order to bomb Cedar Creek. Ford says that they are not in a war to bomb the small town, but Donald says they are currently in a war against the virus, and the town population will be a casualty of war in order to save the population of their country. The next day, Sam finds out that the antiserum from Ford treats the original strain of the virus. He then figures out that Ford keeps it a secret all along. Suddenly, the assistant collapses to the ground as he is already suffering from the virus symptoms. They immediately administer first aid to him. As Robbie is injecting him with a serum, she accidentally scars herself with the injection needles. Sam confronts Ford for keeping the Motaba virus antidote a secret, which possibly prevents the current outbreak. But Ford says that the decision is made to preserve the power of the military biological weapon, and that decision is done for the sake of national security. He then informs Sam the military is about to bomb the town to eradicate the virus. Sam realizes they want to bomb the town to still keep the information about the virus a secret. Donald finds out that Sam is in the town against the order, so he orders the military to arrest Sam. In the meantime, the rookie informs Sam that the worker smuggles an animal from a ship in Africa. Knowing that the animal is the possible host, Sam tells the rookie they need to hunt it down. Before leaving, Sam tells his ex-wife to leave the town if she does not experience any symptoms, as the military is about to bomb the town. Later, Sam and the rookie sneak in the military helicopter and fly out of the town before being arrested. They head to the customs office, where they ask for the documents about the ships docked in the town. They figure out the name of the ship and the government staff helps them to track it down. They fly to the sea and find the ship. Sam jumps to the ship and finds the former owner of the host monkey is already dead. He takes a look at the belongings of the former owner and finds a picture of the host monkey. He then goes back to the helicopter and they fly to a television network station. 
There, Sam announces in the news broadcast that the white head monkey is the host of the virus. Meanwhile, a young girl living near the woods encounters the white head monkey. She makes a drawing of it, and her mother sees the drawing. The mother sees the photo of the monkey on the television and figures out that it is similar to her daughter's drawing. She immediately calls to report it. Sam receives the report, and they fly toward the address of the young girl. There, the young girl lures out the host monkey, and the rookie shoots it with a tranquilizer. Sam and the rookie proceed to fly back to the town with the host monkey. Donald figures out the location of Sam, and he personally flies with his team to arrest Sam. Donald and his team intercept Sam's helicopter along the way. The rookie is maneuvering their helicopter to escape from Donald's helicopter. Donald orders the pilot to shoot at Sam's helicopter as it goes under the bridge, but the rookie manages to evade all of the bullets. The rookie then pilots the helicopter up to the sky, which confuses Donald's team. He eventually manages to escape from the sight of Donald's team. He then fires a bomb in the forest to make Donald think that their helicopter crashed in the forest. Donald finds the fire in the forest. He is not convinced, so he calls the radar plane to track a flying object in the sky. Fortunately, the rookie flies the helicopter too low, so the radar cannot track them down. Sam reports to Ford that he already has the host, so he tells Ford to delay the bombing order. The rookie and Sam soon arrive back in town with the host monkey. Sam immediately orders the rookie to get blood from the monkey and to create massive doses of antidotes to treat the virus infection in the town. It turns out that they did not arrive to save the assistant in time, since he had already died from the virus. Sam sees Robbie is suffering from the symptoms of the virus. He removes his hazmat suit and embraces her with his muscles. As the antidote is ready, Sam administers it to her. They then figure out that the antidote is working as she feels better. Donald arrives at the headquarters and immediately orders to bomb the town. The bombing airplane then heads to the position. Sam and the rookie find out the military is about to bomb the town to prevent the discovery of the virus and its anti-serum. As it appears, Donald wants to bomb the town to preserve the virus as a military bioweapon. Sam calls the bombing airplane pilots using the radio, and he tells them to abort the bombing. Ford hints to Sam to fly in the way of the bombing airplane to prevent it from dropping the bomb. The rookie pilots the helicopter in the way of the bombing airplane. The bombing airplane then evades them, causing them to drop the bomb in the sea. The bomb explodes in the sea, and they successfully save the lives of the town population. Ford orders the arrest of Donald for not revealing to the president that there is an antidote to the virus. In the end, Sam and his ex-wife Robbie rekindle their hormone ship as a couple while the town is being treated for the infection. This is Daniel CC Movie Channel. Stay safe and enjoy your day.